Now we're going to read in depth about the term diastrophism. The textbook definition says, all processes that move, elevate or build up portions of the Earth's crust come under diastrophism. Now I want you to recollect what we have read in chapter 3 of class 11, that is interior of Earth. In that we clearly understood that the crust is divided in the form of some major and minor plates. And these plates have three types of motions. When two plates come towards each other, we call that as convergent boundary. When they move apart from each other, we call that as divergent boundary. And then sometimes these plates slide past each other. So it is because of these three movements, you will see changes on surface of the earth, that is the crust. Now mountains emerge because of this. Then we have faults, huge cracks on the land surface because of this. So this is what is dystrophism. Now diastrophism is broadly classified into two types, that is epirogenic movement and orogenic movement. The first one is epirogenic movement. The word epirogenic, let's break the word, the meaning of the word epiros is land and genic can be derived from genesis which means birth or origin. So together epirogenic means the origin of land. Epirogenic movements are vertical. So to make a piece of land, all the materials comes out from within the earth's mantle, that is the magma. When that solidifies, it becomes hard rock and once rock begins to break down through weathering, it turns into sediments and that becomes land for us. So the movement is vertical. Now what happens in orogenic movements is that orogeny is the origin of mountains. So their movements are sideways or horizontal movement. Now what happens when crustal plates move horizontally? They either come closer or they move apart or they slide past each other. But then in this we know it's a mountain forming process. And mountains are only possible if two crustal plates come closer. When two plates come closer, the smaller plate goes under the bigger one. That causes larger piece of rocks to twist and fold, making the land surface to elevate. And that forms a mountain. Now let me show few places of earth where this kind of mountain building processes took place. You'll find long mountain ranges in all these places. Here we have the Andes, then here is Himalayas, then here is Ural Mountains. This part is known as Rocky Mountains of Western United States. So always remember, orogenic is a mountain building movement and epirogenic is a land forming movement.